Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also good morning. So today I wanted to go ahead and update you guys with the day 3-4 uh, update for the Ball Lightning character. Also before I get started, don't forget if you are interested in purchasing the Kirak Ball Pass, I'll have a link down below if you want to help support the stream as well. Other than that though, I want to go ahead and talk about this character. So our Atlas completion is going pretty well. We're basically 10 points off of max. We have two unique maps left to acquire and ironically it's not Putrid Cloister and Coward's Trial. It's actually Twilight Temple and Poor Joy's Asylum. I actually got two Coward's Trials primarily because what I've been doing is a Atlas at the beginning where I focused full Kirak. Now I dropped Kirak recently, um, but I was basically full Kirak fishing for unique maps via comprehensive scouting reports. Um, but anyway, we were actually stuck in Labyrinth for the better part of like four hours. It took close to, I think, 50 lab runs uh, before we were able to get our new gem, which is Ball Lightning of Orbiting. Now, I have opted out to use Ball Lightning of Orbiting over regular Ball Lightning as I think it suits my playstyle better and has a higher single target output. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in and show you guys. I also do have like Ice Nova of Frost Bolts, but it's not really what I am interested in playing. So let's go ahead and jump into a map and kind of show you guys what we got. I don't actually know how bad Monster Suppress Damage is. I imagine it's actually pretty bad, right? Hmm. I only play Dot Build, so I'm not really sure. <laughs> So we're currently farming Jungle Valley. Um, with this character right now, what I'm basically doing is I have Harvest and Legion on my Atlas. Legion, so that in the future I can acquire a Glorious Vanity uh, and come down here and stick it here so that I can turn Unwavering Stance into Corrupted Soul. This will give me a huge ES boost and allow for half of the damage to hit the Life Pool. So that way we have Life Leech, Energy Shield Leech, and then naturally we have a big Mana Pool for sustain. So basically, the way I play this character now is we're kind of like a hammered in from like D2, right? We basically blink. Well, I guess the hammered in wouldn't have blink, but we blink into the pack with our frost blink. Our frost blink is supported by Ellie Prolif. So we freeze most packs that we jump into. And then we pretty much just tap our ball lightning and we're good to go. And then for the tankier targets, we have our sigil and we have our frost shield and vol grace. I still need to work on Suppression Cap on this character, but other than that, everything feels pretty good. I think the other potential problem is we don't have any crit reduction. Um, I think the best way to get crit reduction is probably, uh, unfortunately, Grave Crafting, because there's a Haunted mod on Body Armors for like 50% crit reduction, I think. I'll do a quick little Legion showcase to show you how it is. It's not too bad. And there's definitely better builds for Legion, but we're still rocking a 5 link, and I'm pretty happy with what the character or character is capable of. I definitely need to automate my flasks so I don't have to worry about spamming them like this all the time. It would help a lot. I also need to ditch the mono flask. Um, probably in favor of a quartz, I think, since I'm not suppression capped yet. And in general, with this playstyle, it's I think it suits a quartz flask better. Damage is honestly pretty good. I'm, I'm very happy with the character. Survivability is better than I thought it would be. There are still occasions where I get, like, kaboomed, but, I mean, the character is still on the very early side of gearing. And here is an example of Harvest. Pretty much stand in the middle, Sigil, Frost Blink, and then on the last pack, I'll just Vol Grace. So, pack one done, pack two is done, and then pack three, Vol Grace. I think this is the suppression mod dicking me a bit here. What's really nice about this setup is when you have so many projectiles hitting at the same time, the instant leech is proccing like crazy. And the instant leech is super important for your sustain. Holy, what is this guy? This is why Corrupted Soul would work so well, because when I'm splitting the damage across different, you know, across my life pool and my energy shield pool, we're gonna finally get that leech on basically both of them 
versus my energy shield going to zero and then they hit against my life pool, right? I really want to go after Maven and Uber Elder. For Uber Elder, I do want Suppression Cap. Right now we are 62%, so need a little bit more. To be fair, my gear has virtually no suppression. Um, then I'll be confident for Uber Elder. I guess realistically I could do Maven whenever. I don't I don't think Maven would be too difficult, but to be honest, I haven't really killed Maven on a build that's not RF before, so <laughs> definitely curious to see how that turns out. Okay. I must have time to gather my own. Boss, where you at? Oh, it's up here. All right, so that's. Pretty much just a normal map clear for the character. Uh, I'll go back and lead the Legion after. So this weapon is basically just T2 cast speed with crafted lightning and mana. It's actually horrible. I really need to drop this to a cast speed base. So this weapon absolutely needs to, needs to get replaced. Here I have Ellie Prolif Frost Blink of Wintry Blast with faster casting. This is the movement skill you see me blink around with a lot. And over here I've got Eternal Blessing and Grace. I need to get more strength to level this. Here I've got two arc, well, an Archmage just leveling, and then a regular Frostblink. This is the one you see me, I kind of weave them together, right? So you can kind of go like that. Over here I've got Frost Shield, Sigil of Power with Duration. This is a wand I grave crafted. It turned out really well. It's probably what I'm going to end up doing for this wand here. Over here is just my really basic 5-link. Um, need to get a better one for sure with Suppression. Um, over here, we've got Inspiration, Archmage, Ball Lightning of Orbiting. Now that I think about it, this is a 19, and this is a 19 with quality. Oh, cool. Uh, Ball Lightning of Orbiting, which I got a quality up here. Slower Projectiles and Lightning Penetration. If you don't have Slower Proj on this, the problem is that they kind of fly a little too far. Um, yeah. See how they're, like, going much further away? And the problem is these outer balls cannot hit the inner side. Whereas if it's, like, this right here... They're like a bit closer. I think. In my brain, maybe? Not sure. Um, then we've got over here lightning penetration. I think our six link is probably gonna be spell echo. Uh, over here I have a really poopy amulet. Basically, I was spamming reforge caster on harvest, so that's this right here. Caster hits cast speed on amulets, also speed. Reforge speed guarantees cast speed. I don't know if that's where I should be spending my Life Force, but what's nice about SSF is I could just go far more. It's not a big deal. Um, the only problem with Caster is you can hit spell damage. It, I think it's like every three spell damage hits, you get one cast speed. So it's like a 25, 30% chance to hit it if you are doing Caster. But if you're doing speed, it's guaranteed. Uh, this ring we crafted with Reforge Caster. I basically spammed until I got something decent. So here we got T1 cast speed, T2 chaos res, T6 mana. I crafted life and then slammed but got life regen kind of shit over here we unveiled this ring you can tell because at the top it has like the unveiled life so this was a pretty nice ring that we found pretty happy with it cast speed is like very important for the build not only does it make it feel better it's a multiplier to your damage because you're scaling so much flat from archmage but also eventually when you want to use spell echo the more cast speed you have the less clunky it will feel uh, over here just some decent gloves nothing special there the lightning damage leech's life is really nice here same boots i picked up in the campaign i cannot believe i haven't replaced these yet i just cannot find better boots um main thing about these boots though is i want new boots number one for more movement speed but number two so we can start spending our acres to get action speed which will be awesome so over in the gloves we've got arcane cloak duration automation and arcane surge <laughs> this is really big because the high level arcane surge gets scaled by your arcane surge effect on hierophant so you really want to have a high level arcane surge here boots i've got punishment enduring cry call to arms 
So this basically just automates Enduring Cry to help heal HP and generate Endurance Charges. Grace is not being used here. I'm just leveling one, so two leveling gems. And yeah, that's pretty much the character. Other than that, I have like our kind of poopy belt as well that I have to upgrade. We did get lucky and I actually pulled a Healthy Mind here. Healthy Mind is acquired by Corrupting Cobalt Jewels. So over here, I have been basically hoarding and collecting and volleying Cobalt Jewels <coughs> to try to get a kind of like a better rolled one. Also, because of the league mechanic, I have like so many vol orbs because when you get the one that's like monsters, weapons are converted to vol orbs. If you have like a Rogue Exile, you slap a Rogue Exile on, you get like 50 plus vol orbs. Same thing with Chaos and pretty much anything else. All right, that's pretty much going to be about it, though. I'm going to go ahead and get to the live stream. So I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day but Sundays at twitch.tv slash box. See you guys all tomorrow.